Corporal locks that door, you'd think I was Ronnie Biggs, ma'am. Actually, Dunbar, I don't suppose Ronald Biggs has gone over the wall quite as often as you have. <laughs> now, what does this make it, Dunbar, the fifth time in two months? Yes, ma'am. And I should think you're really before it this time. And you want me to help you prepare a defence? Oh, yes, please, ma'am. Well, frankly, Dunbar, I wonder if there is any defence. Let's consider the fact, shall we? You went missing for 36 hours. You took an officer's car without permission. And when the MPs picked you up, you were joyriding along the south coast with a young lady who dances topless in a cage in a Shoreham by Sea discotheque. No, we weren't joyriding, ma'am. Oh? We were arrested in a lay-by. Front or back seat, Dunbar? I knew you would understand, ma'am. It's just, sometimes I get so, so frustrated and then I just have to go off and do my own thing. If you wanted to do your own thing, I wonder why you joined the army. So do I, ma'am. All right, Dunbar, let's see if we can concoct some sort of a defence. Now, look, can we say that this dancer was your regular girlfriend whom you missed terribly? Not a chance, ma'am. I only picked her up that night. <laughs> Dunbar, I don't think phrases like picked her up will help your case. But it's the truth, ma'am. She was dancing in her cage, fell off her perch, so I picked her up. It's nice to know that chivalry isn't dead. Why? Look, um... Can you think of any mitigating circumstances? I'm Scottish, ma'am. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that will be taken into account. Look, Dunbar, your commanding officer is Captain Quilly, not me. I think perhaps you should ask for him to help you defend yourself. But you must be joking, Hen. Certainly not, Dunbar. Captain Quilly is a man of the world, I'm quite but sure... There's no say in your papers, ma'am, that when the Red Caps arrested me, it was Captain Quilly's car we were in the back of. <laughs> Another cup of coffee, Penny. Look, here's a football result to savour. Four, five, five, East five, four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, five Russian tank divisions stopped the speeding on the Hammersmith flyover. What's that, Russian tanks? Ah, you're with us, are you? <laughs> well, now that I have the kitchen's attention, me lud, I would like to put it to me lud in a gallant wife. Not now, Russell. Let me rephrase the question. I'd like to ask the lady if she'd like another cup of coffee. Yes, please. Honestly, Penny, you've been immersed in those law books ever since you got home last night. I mean, you're defending a Randy Scott's tearaway, not Joan of Arc. <laughs> I'd like being married to Perry Mason. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I just really want to do my best for Dunbar. Well, why? He doesn't deserve it. That's not the point, Russell. He specifically asked for my help when he could have turned to his own CO. Who happens to be Captain Quilly? That's right. No wonder he keeps running away. <laughs> Morning, all. <clears throat> ah, sorry I'm late. I found this in the hall. Oh, thanks, Fitz. She keeps going absent without leave, don't you? <laughs> there we are, darling. <coughs> Just got to the crawling stage. And so early. I don't usually reach the crawling stage till I've had my eighth pint. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did the doctor say about your hand, then? Oh, he just said shampoo regularly and not to go out when there's a full moon. <laughs> Russell must be paying you too much if you can afford to haunt joke shops. Very apt. Haunt. <laughs> workers' playtime fits. Well, they had a special offer on. Spend a fiver and he gives you a big hand. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> so, I thought I would take the opportunity of buying Emma an early birthday present. Oh, that's nice. Here. Oh, thank you, Fitz. Don't you think Emma's a bit young for Lego? It'll keep. 
Only when Wally's got a bargain on his stall, you've got to snap it up. As indeed you must do with Lego. <laughs> buy Emma anything from Wally. You know he's shady. Be fair, Pen. Wally's as honest as the day is long. Oh, yeah? Without Wally, Shaw Taylor would only be introducing Police 3. <laughs> Got to admit it, Fitz. Even Wally's lorry fell off the back of a lorry. Well, I heard it was supposed to be the thought that counts. Oh, Fitz, yes it is. Of course it is. But next time, try to think of something suitable. Like a, a cuddly toy, honestly obtained. I see why we're so worried about Wally's sources. What's with all the Queen's regulations? Military law. It's work fits. Remember work. Penny's playing at lawyers, defending some soldier on a minor charge. What did he do? Well, if you must know, he took a car without permission and was picked up by the MPs. I think it's disgusting the way these politicians carry on. <laughs> Fitzroy, MPs are military policemen. Oh. <laughs> Look, if you two can't make a sensible contribution... I can't, I can't. I met the postman at the door and I signed for a recorded delivery for you, Ross. Well, where is it? In my hand. Oh, don't mess about, Fitz. Where is it? I told you. In my hand. <laughs> oh, no, not a buff one. Oh, help me someone. <laughs> oh, help me someone. Oh, HMS. Oh. Good news never arrives in buff envelopes. Oh, could be a tax demand. You're a little ray of sunshine, aren't you? Oh, fantastic. Wonderful. The answer to every struggling businessman's prayers. What on earth is it? I've only been called up. Oh, now, don't be silly, Russell. If they'd reintroduced national service, someone would have told me. A jury service. I'm summoned to attend the third of next month. <laughs> well, there's poetic justice for you. Now we can both take an interest in the law. It's not funny, Penny. I've got a business to run. I've got a baby to look after. I've got a train to catch. Look, don't worry, darling. We'll work something out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, darling. Bye. Think of it as a privilege. Privilege? It's a disaster. So these trials can go on for months. I beg to differ, Russell. I watch Crown Court, and on that, the trial always finishes on Thursday afternoon. <laughs> How can they do this to me? I'm a working mother. <laughs> My dad once got off jury service. Really? How? Oh. He just told the truth. Which was? That the prison wouldn't give him time off. I don't know how a note of levity has crept into these proceedings. We're facing a very serious crisis. We? Yes, we, as in me and you. If I'm forced to stop brewing, who's going to pay your wages? Biscuits. This is not a problem, Ross. It's a crisis. <laughs> here. There's a list here of all sorts of people who are excused jury service. Policemen, clergymen, coroners, peers of the realm. Oh, hold on. Here's a good one, Ross. I'll read it. Active elder brethren of the Corporation of Trinity House of Deptford Strond are excused jury service. Deptford what? Strond. <laughs> I give up. What's a Strond? Don't say. I thought you'd know, Russ. You watch Call My Bluff. Well, I don't. <laughs> well, if you don't know, you're probably not a member. Here! Oh, leave it out. Please. No, no, no. I found some genuine good news here. You get an allowance of £14 each day you're on the jury. It won't go very far. It'll pay my wages. <laughs> oh, those are glad tidings. Terrific news. Well, that's my main problem solved, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, Ross. No, 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 that's, that's great, well. Fitz. Knowing I can pay you really takes a load off my mind. So what if my business collapses? A mere bag of tails. Start another one. After all, Emma's getting on for nine months. Soon be able to fend for herself. Oh, no, leave it out, Ross. Look, if it helps, I'll put in some extra hours so we can get ahead on next month's orders. I wouldn't think of it. Take a fortnight's holiday. Well, if you insist. But I wouldn't expect any holiday pay. Till after the trial. Dear Quintin. Who do you know called Quintin? Lord Chancellor, he's still Quintin, isn't he? Well, I think at the moment he's Lord Hailsham. Why are you writing to him anyway? I thought I'd go for the personal approach. You know, ask him to get me off the jury. Why? Why? You know why. Because of my unique responsibilities. Save my little business, look after my little daughter. You know, trivial reasons. Oh, I do think you're over dramatising, Russell. You employ Fitz to help in the brewery, now you can get your money's worth out of him. Oh, Fitz is a novice as far as beer's concerned. <laughs> you wouldn't think that to watch him drink. Well, in the brewery, he's a child. Talking of children. Uh, look, don't worry about Emma, darling. My mother's on amber alert. What do you mean? I phoned her from work. She's agreed to come in each day you're away and look after Emma. Oh, that's ridiculous. Fitz is Dr. Spock compared to your mother. There's nothing wrong with the way I was brought up. 
You were brought up by professionals, nurses and nannies. Your mother was merely an interested onlooker. Now, that's not true, Mr. <laughs> Mummy looked after me, quite often. <laughs> she loves Emma. She spoils Emma. Look, whatever you say, Russell Milburn, I think that you should serve on this jury. Think of it as one of those things that one does, even though one may not always enjoy doing it, but because it is one's duty, like voting Conservative. <laughs> one doesn't. Well, one should. <laughs> well, all right, don't help me. I'm not giving up without a fight. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to phone the Lord Chancellor. It's time you heard the voice of the self-employed. They've got another thing coming if they think I'm going to take this lying down. Good night. <laughs> Oi, wake up. Here, exhibit A, mate. Only the judge is allowed to keep. Oh, sorry. I've been up till three o'clock every morning since the trial began. Oh, I've been squeezing in a late shift, have you? Yeah, sort of. I work for myself. Oh, I see. Yeah, this jury lock's a bit rough on you self-employed types. Mm. Now, me, I'm a civil servant. I get special paid leave for jury service. And it's more interesting than me job. What line of business are you in, then? I'm a brewer. Small world, innit? I'm in customs and excise. Batman! Before I continue with my summing up, I would like to remind certain members of the jury, that although these walls are about a sort of mahogany panelling and the chairs covered in fine quality hide, nevertheless, this is a court of law and not the smoking room of a gentleman's club. Fat chance. What? <laughs> Look, no, no, I... I will have order. Right, now, members of the jury, you've seen these examples of these, uh, these toy bears which were found in the defendant's garage, and you've been told that they're identical to 2,000 bears which were stolen from an export consignment from a vehicle which was hijacked on the M4. Right, now, counsel for the defense has stoutly claimed that these, these 750 teddy bears found in the defendant's garage <laughs> were intended as surprise birthday presents for the defendant's son. <laughs> Well, now, members of the jury, you must make up your own minds on that point. Bearing in... Be, no, 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 remembering that the defendant's son is, uh, is 24 years old. And, uh, and, uh, and a minicab driver. Is he a minicab driver? Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, what is it now, Dunbar? I'd just like to say thanks for getting me off. Two weeks' confinement to barracks isn't getting off, Dunbar. Aye, but I was expecting much worse. You were magic. How you thought that story up about me noticing Captain Quilly's brakes needed adjusted. So I took the car for a test drive. Great. Yes, well, consider yourself lucky that they gave you the benefit of the doubt. I wouldn't have. Oh, I'm glad you were on my side. Let's hope that from now on you keep out of trouble. Oh, I will. Well, I promise. I just uh, wish there was a... Uh, some way I could thank you properly, ma'am. If I wasn't confined to barracks, I would buy you a wee dram. That will be necessary, Dunbar. Ah, away with you. <laughs> Look, I tell you what, you could always borrow a bottle from the officer's mess and nip up and see me in my barracks for a guard on the listening to Billy Connolly records. You may just be pushing your luck, Dunbar. Ah, you're a woman of the world. You've got spirit. Underneath that uniform, Dunbar. I know that there's a woman Dunbar. bursting to get out. Wrong, Dunbar. Stand to attention, Dunbar. Right turn. I despair of you, Dunbar. Yes, ma'am. Quick march. What are you doing, ma'am? I'm returning you to the guard room. You're on a charge, Dunbar. Insubordination. Oh, I know again. Me and my big mouth. Yes, at least it makes a change from the last time, Dunbar. Can I ask you a question, ma'am? Yes, if it's civil. I don't suppose there's any chance of you defending me again, is there? Emma? No, 
course not. Penny's mum's making a right fuss of her. Bought her some more toys. Don't mention toys. In fact, don't say anything. Why not? Judge says we mustn't discuss the trial. I didn't know we were. Well, take it from me, toys play a significant part. Bear it in mind. <laughs> not that you How I wish that were true. What is the problem? Well, You remember that special brew we're doing for the sports and social club dance? What's wrong with it? Nothing is wrong with it as such. But it's disappeared. <laughs> it's what? How can 600 pints of strong ale disappear? Keep your voice down, Ross. This is a court of law. It'll be a place of execution in a minute. What did you do with it? Oh, it's always me, isn't it? It was all there last night. Well, when I went down at 10.30 this morning... Oh, the early start, was it? Hey? <laughs> no! The vessel was empty. I think you must have left one of those taps open. Are you saying it's my fault? The ancient Romans used to execute the bearer of bad tidings, even though he was a mere messenger. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Fitz. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. Just gonna have to brew up another batch and hope it's ready in time. Now, do you remember how to start it off? I think so. Oh, but I wish you were there, Ross. Can't you hurry this jury along? You've been here for four days already. Don't be ridiculous, Fitz. This is a central criminal court, not the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> Mind you, there's not much to choose between them for boredom. Oh, I don't know. We've had one or two good entries, you know, Jack in a Box, puppets on us. For oh, heaven's <laughs> sake, stop talking about toys. Now, you've nothing planned for tonight, have you? Because you're going to be working around the clock. Oh, the trials of an apprentice brewer. I tell you, Ross, if this jury doesn't sort itself out soon, there's going to be... <laughs> it's not the jury, it's the judge. He's been summing up for the last two and a half days. Ooh. And I must make tracks, I'm going to miss my lunch. Here! I haven't had any lunch. All right, young fella, my lad, you're nicked. <laughs> and what? Let me paraphrase. I'm feeling your collar, running you in. You're under arrest. Why? What have I done? You've been overheard trying to influence a member of the jury. Influence? I only wanted him to get me into the canteen. Oh, well, in that case, you're in luck, my son. Because where you're going, you'll get a free hot lunch. Oh. Not to mention porridge for breakfast. Come on. Oh. <laughs> oh. Help, Ross! Russell, coffee. Oh. Oh, well, come and visit you, Fitz. It's all... hey. <laughs> oh, hello, sorry. I must have dozed off. <clears throat> what time is it? Uh, nearly two. Oh. How are we doing? Oh, I think it'll be ready in time. Just have to drink it young. Ah, oh, like Beaujolais. Like metal polish. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, darling. I don't know what I'd have done without your help. Well, I couldn't leave you working down here on your own. Anyway, I quite enjoy humping half hundred weight sacks of barley. Makes me feel rather like a land girl. Well, I never made it back, but it's not so quickly. Well, you could have if Fitz had shown up. Honestly, Russell, I know he's your friend, but he's so unreliable. You'll have to let him go. Well, perhaps he's got a good reason for not being here tonight. Now, don't give him the benefit of the doubt, Russell. He doesn't deserve it. You're being hard, Penny. You're being soft, Russell. Now, listen, Ken, we knew he wasn't what you call a model worker when we took him on. Otherwise, we'd never have got the council grant to employ him. In my bones, I just know he's got a good reason for not being here tonight. I thought Private Dunbar was a slacker, but he's like Sir Michael Edwards compared to Fitz. Oh, thank goodness to my <laughs> Oh, darling, I do feel so guilty for the way I pressed you to accept that jury summons. Oh, there's no need to, dear. Even your sparkling advocacy wouldn't have got me off. Do you know, there's one juror brought a medical certificate from a psychiatrist to prove he had delusions of grandeur with severe megalomaniac tendencies. Did they let him off the jury? No, no, made him foreman. <laughs> well, he insisted on it, actually. <laughs> well, I tell you, if the soldier deserted his post the way Fitz had, he'd be on a charge in the cells. Yes, well, I think we've done this for all the time down here. Time for bed. Ah, goodie. Ah. To sleep. Do you know how I <laughs> Ah, that'll be Fitz with a very good reason for not being here. I'll be the judge of that. All right, Fitzroy. What? Yes, all right. Bye-bye, love. Poor Fitzroy. He's on a charge in the cells. Yes, I know. Well, I didn't even know why he'd been arrested till they discharged me from the jury. 
I offered to bail him out. They said I was lucky not to be arrested with him. Now, last night, you let me say all those terrible things about poor little Fitz, knowing that he was languishing in some airless lockup. Well, I didn't see the point in upsetting you. Just a misunderstanding. I hope the magistrate sees it that way. Um, excuse me. I also hope that this little escapade doesn't end up with Fitz having a criminal record. He's already got a criminal record. I don't know how you can <laughs> joke while poor Fitz is in custody. But it's just a mistake. As soon as he explains it to the magistrate, he's bound to be released, isn't he? Why ask me? Well, you're the barrack room lawyer. Now, look, that's not funny. I think at this very moment, you and I should be down at the police station insisting they release Fitz. I think they already have. <laughs> They gave you a hard time, did they? I'm all right. They gave me the third degree. <laughs> they beat the soles of my feet, used the thumb screws. You didn't talk. Of course I talked. Eventually, they got bored with the sound of my voice and decided to drop the charges. I'm so pleased, Fitz. So, you won't be up before the beak on Monday, then? I don't know. What time does he get up? <laughs> I hope you can forgive Russell for getting you into trouble. He was so desperate to get off that jury. It was nothing to do with Russell. It was just that copper with his eye on promotion. I told you, Penny. You mean Russell didn't put you up to it? You're joking. Russell isn't devious enough to think up a clever stroke like that. Well, thank you very much. I mean, thank you very much. Um, did I give you some coffee, darling? Oh, Russell. I'm so sorry. Mwah. So it's all worked out. Mm. I'm off the stupid jury. <clears throat> mm. My wife is talking to me again, and Fitz can walk tall his ordeal behind him. Except, Russell, for his memory of a traumatic mm. night spent in police custody. Was it terrible, Fitz? Well, compared to my bed sit, it was luxury. <laughs> anyway, while I was in that cell, I realised how lucky I am to have friends like you. You're more like family to me. In fact, I told a friend about you, and he's dying to meet you. He's just outside, shall I fetch him in? Oh, yes. Of course, Fitz. Dying, would you like a biscuit? Hmm. Ta -da -da, ta -da 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 -da. <laughs> Get it out of here, Fitz. What are you talking about, Russell? Get it out of here, it's stolen property. What? It's stolen property. Now get it out. Don't be daft, Ross. I got it from Wally. <laughs> frustrated export order. Of course it's a frustrated export order. It was frustrated when they hijacked the lorry. Now get it out of here. <laughs> Ross, darling, it is gorgeous. Emma will love it, won't you, darling? And we don't know it's stolen. No. <laughs> and you can't look a gift bear in the mouth. <laughs> oh, all right, we'll keep it. Just make sure it wears dark glasses when he goes out of the house. <laughs> there was one serious disadvantage about being in the nick. They don't go in much for draft beer. Couldn't half do with a pint, Ross. Yes, coming up. <clears throat> uh, how about one for your furry friend? <clears throat> Sounds like Teddy's had enough already. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, mate. You sleep it off. <laughs> More funny goings on next in Surgical Spirit.